um, paid link farms, and even guest blogging now seems to be on the chopping block, right? And there's probably still ways that you can add value and do some guest blogging, but not in the way that people have been doing it at scale and trying to automate the process. So let these guys do the link building tactics, right? Let the hackers in their mother's basements do the link building tactics. Us as marketers need to move on. I know, I know, content, it's king. Everybody says it. But it's really important before I dive in that we understand what I'm going to talk about everything surrounding content. The assumption is that, that in 2014 and beyond, if we're doing link building and link earning, it's, sur it's surrounding something great that you have on your site or on other sites. And so Aaron and also Mary will be speaking earlier today. Uh, start speaking next about content and how you can generate ideas and create that good content. What I'm going to talk about today is this. Real marketing is not set it and forget it. You don't just hit publish and, and hope that something happens for free, like links will just start flowing to your site. That doesn't happen. And neither is marketing content, SEO, or inbound. Anyone know this? Oh, you really can't see it. That's a shame. The set it and forget it infomercials, yeah. But what it comes down to is really hustling. Assuming that you have great content on your site, assuming that you're putting out wonderful, valuable stuff for your users, you need to hustle. And these are the three areas I'm going to dive in today and give some actionable takeaways. Organic seeding, paid acceleration, and automation. And once you have these down, the sort of marketing snowball that occurs keeps rolling and shares, visits, and links start to occur naturally. All right, let's dive in. Organic seed. So you either have time or you have money. If you have a limited budget, the most likely thing that you have is time. And so if you can take that time and seed content in the right places, you'll be able to get a lot of visits, shares, and likes. So there are a ton of content discovery networks and tools that have come out now. The, the web is just this ADD place where none of us have enough time to read everything that's out there. So we want people to curate and edit that for us. And that's what we're seeing. So, a few tools. Who remembers StumbleUpon? It's old, right? I mean, a lot of people. But guess what? It's back. Seriously. So, here's just a brief example. Here's a feed on Stumble. And, you know, 13 clever hacks for things that you thought were trash, right? Just a simple little article with 13 pictures, not a lot of text. And someone got, you can't see it, 18,000. 18,000 views, right, on StumbleUpon. And here's the original post on Apartment Geeks, some blog. Really not that hard to do. But just because that person just didn't hit publish, but they actually took the time to see it and build themselves up on StumbleUpon as an authority, they were able to get a ton of views and shares. Same thing again, 99 songs to make your homework awesome. This is actually a pretty decent sized company that did it, 8tracks.com. 2.5 million views just by seeing it. On StumbleUpon. That's it. Um, now, granted, it already had to be a great piece of content. It got this nice overview, but right, seven and a half thousand, seven and a half thousand links, uh, shares rather. It's awesome. But it's not just shares. Um, you can also get links from this stuff too. But it comes from having great content and seeding in the right place. So, like any other network, any social seeding network. If you build a profile on that network and build authority, watch how others do it, see your content, and you'll start doing great. I need to pick up, I got a lot of slides. Uh, all right, let's go, more seeding sites. So there are a ton of these sort of apps and sites out there now. Zite is one of them, it's all mobile. Um, and if you can tap into a topic-focused area, subject matter expert content site, you can actually see your site there or your content and get a ton of shares and links. Poshby, actually John Berg from Conduit told me about this. It's an addictive plugin that I use. Every time you open up a Chrome tab, you see an, another awesome piece of content full screen. Um, and if you can get in front of those influencers' eyes, which I think John's going to be Tom's going to be talking about, then then you have this chance to get a ton of eyeballs for free. Um, and it's not just the end users; it's the people sharing content, the influencers, the brands. They've got this huge audience. They need to find feeds on Twitter and so on. So they're using applications now to find that content. Okay, it's my obligatory for the company. So, <laughs> so 
Uh, all right, here's, the, here's a case study, how meth affects you. Uh, colors are really off here. You can see how nice this is. Um, it was a, a, this is not our client, but uh, a client of a friend. DrugRehab.org decided to put out this infographic. Now, by itself, just publishing it, the infographic, cool, okay, fine. But then what? How do you really leverage that content? How do you get more eyeballs? Um, take this infographic, all right? Chop it up. So imagine one long infographic or one wide infographic. Chop it up into different blocks and throw it on the SlideShare. How many of you guys know what SlideShare is? How many of you used it to re-chop up content or republish content? Awesome. So, so SlideShare is an amazing way where you can just get more views and just squeeze more out of the content that you already have on your site. And then you can take that embed and put it right on the same post that you originally had. Just another way for people to digest or share uh, that content. And another 11,000 views here just by chopping it up. It takes 10 minutes. Um, BuzzFeed, right? How many of you have read a BuzzFeed article in the last week? <laughs> right? Um, but how many of you have written a post on BuzzFeed? A handful, two, three, two of which are for me. You know. so, so, so you can write a post on BuzzFeed, right? And you hear, this is when I dig into you for only having one cat power. So, um, but, uh, but you can build up your equity on the network and take that original content, the infographic, and, and then publish a post. Now, don't just publish the original post, here's this infographic done. No, create another piece of content on BuzzFeed or another network. Uh, 42 mind-boggling images that will look, melt your brain, right? And embed that one as one of the numbers, right? You get an external link there. So, yeah, I'm running, but I gotta go quickly. <laughs> so that's just another pro tip, BuzzFeed, embed on one of your pieces of content in a larger content piece. All right, that's organic. Pay, we're gonna pick up the pace now. So you either have time or you have money, and if you have money, just a little bit, you can accelerate what we were just doing on the seeding side, getting more paid eyeballs, right? So. Here we go. Outbreak. How many of you have heard of Outbreak? They're from Israel. We should have all had. And Tabula. Tabula? You've heard of Tabula? How many of you have used Outbreak or Tabula on marketing campaigns? One, two. Awesome. Oh, so, um, so you guys are familiar with this. You're at the bottom of a post on CNN or Times of Israel, wherever you are, and you see recommended posts, right? You guys have all seen this? You can be there too for not that much money. And for a hundred bucks, a hundred fifty bucks, you can get 700,000, close to a million impressions, and not that many clicks, but you can get clicks. And if your content is good enough, if you think what you've done is great, then spend the extra money to go the extra mile to make that marketing fly will happen, right? You can get that initial seed set of, share, of shares and views, and if it's good enough, it will actually start accelerating. And you can use these to also optimize your titles, right? So you could publish a, 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 an article without publishing to the public. It's hidden on your site and then push it in outbreak to find out which one's going to work the best when you actually publish. And there's your data, right? And so, right, and you can optimize, you can decide who's, which countries you're targeting, so you don't just you know, hit every single country in East Asia, but, and, and optimize for CTR, let your PPC folks do this. But in the end, you get a ton more visits and shares and potentially links. And that makes me really happy. Not if you can't say it, sorry. Um, all right, next, Google approved paid links, maybe. So this is a solution of getting content in front of bloggers right when they are at the point where they might link out. So I'm a blogger and I'm typing up my posts and I think, hmm, I want to add more value to my users by linking out to this word that I just mentioned. So how many of you guys have heard of Zamanta? Not that many, awesome. So Zamanta is this network and plugin that bloggers have installed on, let's say, their WordPress. And while they're typing out their article, they're going to get suggestions for images or other articles that are talking about that. So instead of a, a, of a blogger linking to an article that's talking about this um, camera or whatever it is, they'll get, instead of Googling that article and finding another authority article, they'll just get them right here. And they can preview them, click one button, and then they're linking out. So that's a way, and so just to clarify, those articles in there are organically seeded, too but they're also paid. So you can pay for your impressions in front of bloggers. 
pretty amazing. You need a decent budget for this, and you need a lot of content on your site, probably 100 articles to start with Samantha, but it's awesome. Okay. <laughs> so retargeting, how many of you guys do retargeting? Google retargeting, a few? All right, I'm not just talking about retargeting for your banner. So this is our Roth's post on our site. We saw, okay, seven things learned while pan uh, analyzing penalized sites. You see that it starts to have a chance. Organically, naturally starts to have a chance. How do we accelerate this? Okay, I'm not gonna go too deep into this, but setting up uh, uh, remarketing. One piece of code change on your site, uh, in your analytic code, gets you set up a double click. You'll then create an audience list for everyone that's visited your site in the last, I don't know, 120 days, let's say. Next, you'll create a custom segment, and does this look familiar for people who use analytics, right? For everyone who did not view that post that I just showed you. And it turns out that 98.5% of people did not view that post that Ari Roth published. So what do we do? We retarget those visitors who did not read that post. Not with a banner talking about our business or a brand, but a preview of that post, and they'll see that all across the web. It can get annoying, you can do some things to tone it down. But it's really valuable to that. Your most engaged visitors, you can get, that's my alarm. Uh, your most engaged visitors, you can get back to your site to read more content that they haven't already. Once they view it, they'll no longer see this ad. Okay, let's blow through. Facebook advertising. So, uh, Mary gonna talk about this, so I'm gonna go really quick. But um, instead of boosting your post, don't just hit the boost post button, right? Don't do that. Go into the back end of Facebook ads, choose the post that you want to publish. And then you can actually demographically target people who you have are already your fans, the friends of fans. That's basic. You should do that for most big content. And this is a big one, and I got it from your boss, Mary. Is um, is targeting journalists, right? You can target people who graduated with journalism degrees, or who work at CNN or New York Times or BuzzFeed, the real staff people, not community pages. And that's awesome because those people, when they're trying to discover content in their news feeds will see our content for cheap. Okay, that's paid acceleration. Here's automation, very quickly. How many of you guys know what reverse image search is? Everyone see it? It's a new thing where you can just drag someone's face and see their logo or their image across the web, right? How many of you have heard of ImageRator? All right, if you walk away from one thing today, it's this. This is one of my favorite tools. It's the same thing as Google reverse image search, except you can automate that process and scrape, okay? So if I've got products, if I sell t-shirts, or if I'm buried and I want to track um, my SMX logos or my face of people using them, using an image without linking back to me, ImageRator will automatically, weekly, monthly, however often, crawl the web and give you a report that you can download to Excel, sorted by domain authority, of all the sites that are using your copyrighted images. So if you've got, you know, your executive board, you know, images that you've taken that are proprietary, Anything that's an image that you have on your site, that's yours, track it, it's dirt cheap, and that's automating reverse image search so you can get links. And by the way, if it's not obvious, you email those people and say, hey, you have our image, please link to us. Twitter and TweetDeck, there's a lot of advanced searches you can do here, right? So um, th this is also from Will Reynolds, a nice tip. For a story, okay? Search for for a story, you're gonna find journalists who are looking to publish this stuff. Um, to, to interview you or to write a story. So this is a great way to get, um, to, uh, to find out where journalists are so looking for a story. And you can, you can change your, your search queries, right, in, in TweetDeck or in Twitter search to find out when people are looking for this kind of stuff. Here's just a few examples, and you can see why this would be really valuable. So if somebody's in the security space, you can get interviewed, you can get on the back. All right, so what about automating that stuff, right? You can't see R2D2. All right, so tools is a way to pull in Twitter searches or feeds of RSS into some other automated tools. So if this, then that. How many people have heard of this? Okay, how many people use it for marketing? All right, so put the internet to work for you, right? If you've got any two apps, web apps, you can have them talk to each other and automate the processes that you're doing in apps. It's not just really building your SEO, by the way. Um, it's as crazy as, Every time somebody tags you on Facebook, you can make your lights flicker at home. And that's kind of extreme. But. 
So I can, we all know about Google Alerts. It's very simple. You can even do advanced operators by saying SMX Israel like anywhere on the web except my own site. But instead of sending me an email, deliver it to a feed, right? And when you do that, you can do some advanced searches in Google Alerts and push it to an RSS feed. And once it's in an RSS feed, with if this, then that, every morning that you wake up, you could have a note in Evernote showing you all the opportunities that we were just talking about. So everybody who mentioned for a story and my industry keyword, awesome. Last couple of slides. So pipes is another way to aggregate RSS feeds from other places, Yahoo Pipes. Um, Zapier, Zapier, I don't know how to pronounce it. It's another one like If This Then That where you can take over 250 web apps, sync them together to get audit sort of processes that you're doing manually done and deliver to you so you don't have to go out there and do that work. So that's pretty much it. Organic seeding, paid acceleration, and automation. If you can do all that or even a couple of those, once you publish content, you actually have a chance of gaining shares, visits, and maybe links out of the content that you work so hard to publish on your own site. But what it really comes down to is hustle. The bottom line is that it's not enough anymore to just have a great piece of content that they publish. In the end, you've got to hustle to ensure that you get the most views, the most shares, and earn the links that you deserve. And that's it. Thank you.